a bigger, to your point, a bigger conversation when you're talking about a salad costing more than a number five, right? Yeah. Like, or when you're talking about trying to buy organic, right? Yeah, meat Which, that doesn't have antibiotics and steroids. free grass fed, whatever, whatever. And, and the price differential is monumental, even fruit. The price of buying fresh fruit that could go bad in two days versus buying canned fruit in syrup, corn syrup, mm -hmm. right? That's going to last your kid a month. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you just throw it in the pantry or they get their little fruit cups out or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talk about corn syrup. Like, it's scary, again, to go back to Michael Pollard's book. Read the ingredients on the boxes and the packaging of your foods. There was a time when nothing you ate would have had more than five to seven ingredients and you could pronounce every single one of them, mm -hmm. right? And it wasn't red number nine, it wasn't blue 32, it wasn't yellow dye. The first ingredients in I would say probably 80% of the foods, especially in the middle shelves of the grocery store, high fructose corn, corn syrup. high fructose corn syrup. It's in everything. Um, I went through Publix one day myself, personally, and picked up this random yeah. stuff. Bread. Why is high fructose corn, corn syrup, syrup in, in bread? bread? You know, it's... And it. I think it stems back to... This goes back to, like, the 30s, the Dust Bowl, when the soil couldn't grow anything but corn, and they over... Well, did we stuff, didn't, and they... We produced, didn't rotate our crops properly. Yeah, they produced yeah. a lot of corn, which predominantly has no nutritional value at all. Mm -hmm. um, they should have pushed it as fuel instead of food. Mm -hmm. No, ethanol would be a much but, better thing than gas. But um, but the they had to do something with all this corn, and they came up with all these derivatives of what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they turned it into a sweetener. They turned it into this. They turned it into that. Well, it also prolongs, I mean, I don't know if high fructose corn syrup does, but a lot of the preservatives that we've started adding into food help things last longer. Mm -hmm. Part of the milling process, you yeah. know, if you left too much of the actual you know, grain mm -hmm. <clears throat> in the process. Why we everything in this country is refined, refined white sugar. Like none rice is not white naturally. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bread, grain is not is not white. It's not doesn't look like a loaf of Wonder Bread. Um, that is all refined sugars, refined carbs. And again, it was to to extend the staying power and the life of a lot of these products. Um, which at this point, when you got a in grocery store in every corner. Yeah. At least east of 95. Who cares how long your bread lasts? It's scary, though, Lenny, because it's very easy to get caught up in the hype and in the conspiracy theories. And again, I'm not negating that there's a good chance that there's some sort of, you know, cause and effect there with the vaccines. But there's a much bigger conversation, especially for the folks who are just mad at government. Like, you want to be mad at them? Be mad at them for allowing people to poison us. Yeah. Oh, that's absolutely. Be mad at them for weird. allowing the pesticides, like Nestor and I were discussing it. There are 1,600 substances that are banned in the EU from being able to be put in everything from your food to your cosmetics to your cleaning products. Do you know how many we have in this country? Did I say eight or nine? Nine. 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 Nine carte blanche and a couple of states have taken it upon themselves to really prioritize the health and well-being of their constituents and have banned 24. 1,600 in the EU. Mm -hmm. Health is one big industry. It is. It's intake and it's maintenance. It is. But it's also, well, and, it, and it's also. I told you I had a doctor that fired me or discharged me as a patient because I wouldn't take meds. Did I tell you that? Well, no, because, and they. And, and they this was a really cool doctor. He was South African. I thought he was really cool. I thought he was really progressive. I don't know, my cholesterol, cholesterol, thyroid, and blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Those three things. You got to take these three meds. Yeah, I'm not going to take meds. Mm -hmm. You got to take these three meds or don't come back here. I'm like, well, can't you fix them with diet? He's like, yeah, but you're not going to. I'm like, uh, not true. <laughs> you know, see ya. So, I don't know, fast forward five years later, I go in for blood work. I'm fine. Yep. I have no issues. Yeah. I, I don't – when you have doctors 
pushing meds like that and not pushing food. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you also, and you know what part of that is too, though, is that because we've become such a litigious society and malpractice insurance costs so much, being a doctor is no longer, I don't want to say that people got into it for it because it was lucrative, but they need the kickbacks in a lot of cases mm -hmm. from the pharmaceutical companies. Or you they know. want them. Of course they do, well, because they want you got to pay off your student loans. I'm not justifying why they push meds, but there's money oftentimes associated or trips or whatever the case may be when you you know get on board. There's dinners. It's what the whole pharmaceutical industry was you know predicated around trips and dinners and this and that and whatever to doctors in order for them to prescribe whatever pill it was that they were pushing, whether it was Viagra mm -hmm. or whether it was you know. Um, oxycodone or you know i mean but like, you just the, the you know the the regular cholesterol blood pressure i mean i would bet god i bet there's a lot of people on all but, of those meds but what's sad is that, but what's sad is that there's also a lot of reasons why we're seeing these astronomical increases yeah, aside from our diet stress, diabetes. but there's also i mean there's i mean again when you're looking at stress factors when you're looking at you know financial impact there's a million things that can cause somebody to go in one day and have high blood pressure yes if your immediate response is take this pill which it is in a lot of cases you know um and then what happens when it there's no money in the cure i was having a conversation with somebody and we were talking about the eu and i was talking about how many substances were banned there and you know just how they live a different kind of life you know there's not the same amount of preservatives put in foods they shop on a more daily basis you know your refrigerator is literally the size of what most of us have in our college dormitories is mm -hmm. what they use on a daily basis in their home but it's because you're going to a market every day and you're going to the fishmonger and you're you know you're getting your yeah. your meat your from a butcher home, you're getting, yeah, yeah everything you're getting is your fresh and you're walking and you're in the, the air it's just a different it's a very different lifestyle it's that way in, in europe it's that way in a lot of central and south america as well they 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 just have a different way of living than we have in the rat race here in the U.S. And they said, yeah, but you also have to think about it this way. Socialized medicine in the EU. It costs them money to have a population that is fat, sickly, and addicted to medications. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, it behooves them to have healthy people. Healthy people cost them less money with medical expenses. Healthy people can work longer and can contribute taxes to keep the system going um i'm not sitting here saying that i i'm a socialist i'm not but i was like oh my god you know like i don't want to say ding 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 so it's clearly from a financial standpoint a benefit to them to be researching you know the products being used in the things that people yeah. are consuming and again putting in but and I mean, on their body if you go back in history early late 1800s early 1900s a lot of Home remedies. A pharmacist used to be someone you went to to get something to cure an ailment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, you'd walk to the pharmacy, you'd go in, you'd tell the pharmacist, hey, you know, it. when I pee, it's like a flamethrower, and he would mix something up for you. And Interesting choice. <laughs> he would mix something up for you, and you would take it, and... <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know what else to say. And and you'd cure. It'd be a cure. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you've seen the whole thing about uh, how um, Rockefeller hijacked the, the healthcare industry. Because to produce pharmaceuticals, you would use oil. Mm. A derivative of oil. Rockefeller hijacked the the healthcare industry because to produce pharmaceuticals you would use oil mm. a derivative of oil great to produce pharmaceuticals and in the 20s and 30s they started banning all of the home remedies or mm. remedies that were used for a long Entry. time um yeah and calling them hocus pocus and this and that and you know rockefeller funded a lot of the medical schools based on mm. this 
way of treating yeah. Yeah. ailments. He grew the, he planted the seed for the pharmaceutical industry. So if you look at that and why it was done and how it was done and that doctors had to do this this way from the beginning, it's no strange thing that doctors still feel like they have to do that. But there's another component to it because in order to sell all this medication, you have to have a sick population. They're exactly the opposite of the U of of the EU. EU. Yeah. Exactly well, the opposite. Well, no, I mean it, because it's private. It always it always, you know, blew my mind that we could create penicillin at a time when we didn't have nearly the amount of technology, right? Or science that we have now. Mm -hmm but we can't cure cancer, something that we've been dumping yeah. billions of dollars into researching now for decades. We and can it's cause like, it, though. <laughs> but, and not only that, we can also keep you alive, like you yeah. said. We can get you just healthy enough where you need to take this medication, right? You're in remission. You might get it back. We don't know. You'll have another round of chemo. We can extend your life. you yeah. got to take this the medication. $97,000. You yeah. got to take this the medication. $97,000. You know, somebody's footing the bill. It's like it's a whole, it's a whole, like you said, they're keeping their, their people healthy so that they have lower costs on health care. We're the opposite. Mm -hmm. They're keeping us unhealthy mm -hmm. so they can make more money on the health care. Yeah. It's the, it's the opposite. And, and, you know, I'm not a socialist. I'm not, I, I, I just, it, it, it doesn't make sense. But Lenny, and it, they don't teach. No, no, no. Okay. That. They don't teach. They don't teach it, but we can all see it. And again, it goes back to financial literacy. We were talking about this in the last episode. Uh, you know, you you having this, you know, assertion that, well, people should just figure it out at this point. I yeah. mean, you know, so I'm going to look at it and say kind of the same thing when it comes to this. Because, you know, when you're talking about what you eat... We saw how our grandparents and our, you know what I mean? Like how, how people lived it. Again, it hasn't been that long. We've done a lot of damage in a very short oh, yeah. amount of time to the human body. My grandmother like, was born in 1900. I think she died in 94. Mm -hmm. and I was telling my daughter yesterday. Was, when was your grandmother born? 1900. Like on the dot? Yeah. Um, and I was telling my daughter last night. That she was 78 years old before she walked into a hospital for the first time. Wow. And she had eight kids. Yeah. You know, 78 years old. Never was in hospital. Yeah. That's 1978. She yeah. went into a hospital for the first time. But she had her own garden. Mm -hmm. She grew all her own yep. vegetables. Yep. She raised her own rabbits for meat. Yep. I remember we used to walk to the grocery store to get, like, milk and bread. Mm -hmm. That was it. I'm surprised we you didn't, have a, grocery surprised store you didn't have a milkman that delivered your yeah, milk. Yeah, we'd, we'd walk to the, you know, during the summers, yeah. we'd walk to the grocery store every day. And but and she wasn't thin. She was a little fat Italian lady, you know, mm -hmm. but completely healthy. How old was she when she died? 94. Okay. No, my, no, no, no. I missed that part. I didn't hear oh, when you said. Yeah, she died in 94. That she, was, okay. she was born in 1900. But every day, red wine, pasta. Mm-hmm. But again, yeah. things she that you was would growing think, it herself. Yes, These were, things that you would think are poison. And she was probably today. composting with her, <laughs> you know what I'm things saying? Things like, that you think are poison today. She lived a long and healthy life.